Welcome back, everyone, to the Electric Coaches channel. And over the past uh, several months, I've been uh, doing EF stuff, as usual. Uh, I've been, uh, you know, mainly sculpting my figures. And uh, in, in the uh, previous video that I had done, the uh, board nostalgia video, I talked about some uh, figures that I needed to reassemble. Well, those figures are complete. And they're right here. Um, but I took a break from sculpting for a moment because I wanted to talk to you guys about the evolution of this hobby regarding the figures that we use and that were used in the past. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how we throw the football in this game. Because one of the common questions among people outside the hobby is how do you throw the football and how do you kick also so I figure I'll put that into the same video with the uh, figures all right because this hobby has come a long way from 1947 all the way up to the present time um, and what you see right here in the middle of uh, my board my classic 620 board. You know, you see a bunch of stuff here because I was doing inventory also. Um, I have here some uh, types of quarterbacks that we use and that has been used in the hobby in the past. I'm going to show you some close-up pictures also in this video, but right here I'm just going to do a brief overview. All right. So this figure right here was uh, Tudor's, uh, one of their first, their first quarterback, by the way. And as you can see, it's a piece of uh, pressed aluminum. And the, uh, the figure and the base are all one piece. This was uh, Tudor's early days back in the uh, 1940s when the game was all metal. The figures, the bases, the board, all metal. I think, it, I think the, softest, the softest piece on the board was the ball itself. And I don't have a ball from that era. But this piece right here was used as the quarterback. And from it, the ball was, was thrown down the board, making contact with the receiver, okay? And the way that was done was the user would simply put the ball in this cup right here. And they would pull back and snap. And the ball would fly down the board and contact the receiver. For the most part, the technique, the procedure, or the way the ball was thrown has never changed. All right? It's been the same since 1947 up until now. Basically, a ball is placed on the hand of the quarterback, and the quarterback's arm is pulled back and released, and the ball is flicked down the board. All right? So, this quarterback was used all the way through the 1950s until Tudor uh, began to uh, they changed their they changed their figures and boards and they went from the one dimensional figure you see here right to the 3D style of kicker if you will kicker quarterback so here is one of the uh, newer style of kickers from the 1960s on into the 70s okay the base is bigger as you can see and the, the, the figure is all plastic all right um this figure is known as the triple threat quarterback why because it throws the ball it kicks the ball and it runs too all right unlike the earlier quarterback which only threw and could run so that was dual threat all right and the way it was done this is another uh let's see here this is another triple threat quarterback different color same concept right this by the way this kicker was made by Tudor in the late 70s all the way through into the 90s right let me get put them side by side here or one on top of the other and you'll see 
they both are the same pretty much except one is yellow and one is white and the base configuration is different all right but the concept was the same um if you when you want to pass see this little hand up here you would simply put your middle finger and thumb on that little hockey stick right there if you will right and you take your index finger up here and you pull back and you flick and the ball will come off right and the way you kicked was the same way you held the hockey stick and you pulled this arm right and the leg will kick off and you say well okay well where's the ball well the ball was basically a piece of uh, felt and I'll do my best to hold it for you in the camera here see that this was the uh, first this was a uh, football from the late 70s all the way through the 90s all the way through the 90s they came on a uh, on a on a piece of a uh, felt strip you got like five of them right and you, this ball had a, a small cut small slit I'm gonna squeeze the ball for you here see if we can get in the camera See how it opens like that? Well, that slit was placed on the quarterback's uh, throwing hand. Like so. Let's see if we can turn it around. All right? And you would pull back on that arm like I showed you earlier. And you would flick the ball down the board. Same concept. That the same concept was used back in the 1940s and the 1950s, except it was used with this quarterback. All right? So now, we got Tudor with their quarterbacks. Well, there were other companies as well. You had a company called Gotham. And their first quarterback was this uh, device here very simple piece of uh, sheet metal uh, it's, it was attached to a piece of uh, particle board and the user was simply put the ball in this hole and flick it like this see the concept is still the same put the ball in the hole or on the, or on the throwing hand of the quarterback you pull back and you flick like that all right so Gotham decided to upgrade their quarterback just like Tudor did and they came out with this type of quarterback all right and this is the ball right here this little piece of metal this little magnet you see right here is shaped like a football right so you take it off and you can see that the quarterback there's a picture of a uh, passing quarterback and the, you would take this metal ball and you would place it right here on this tip on this red tip this is a little piece of uh, plastic there that would dampen the magnetism because the ball itself is a magnet and you would place the ball on the rubber on that plastic tip like this and the user would place his finger inside this loop see this white tab right here user will grab it and he will flex the sheet metal and flick and this metal metal ball will come off and go down the board and make contact with the receiver that's a completed pass by the way if you if the ball hits the receiver it's completed pass if the ball hits the defender it's an interception if you miss everything or hit the board first that would be an incomplete pass all right um, I'm going to go to some pictures in just a moment, but I want just to give you a small overview here on the game board, all right? And this quarterback, my friends, is from the company called Coleco. Now, as you notice, this quarterback is very big. It's the biggest among all of them, all right? These are old school quarterbacks I'm showing you right now. Again, we're going to go over to the... Uh, the computer and I'm going to show you some pictures of these quarterbacks again all right 
And the way this quarterback worked was, you see the throwing hand here, right? Well, on the back, there was a lever that you pulled back on. And the arm would flex. And you would release. The ball being in the quarterback's hand up here would fly down the board. Right? And the way that it kicked, see this little tab right here where my index finger is? You pull back on that tab and the foot will flex. Turn it this way. All right? You see how I pull back? And you release. And the ball will get kicked. All right? Now, these quarterbacks I showed you, the Gotham quarterback, the the old school, uh, the first Tudor quarterback, which really is the first electric football quarterback, by the way, this this model right here. All right. I, I've never played with those figures. These figures, those quarterbacks were before my time. All right. So what I want to do, I want to take you over to the computer here. and We're going to look at some pictures. Give you some close ups. All right, later in the video, I'm also going to show you a passing play. I'm going to diagram a passing play. We're going to uh, cover that. I'm going to show you a passing play in action, in tournament play, all right? Okay, so in the beginning, I showed you the Tudor quarterback. And here is a uh, picture of the quarterback. And next to it, that blue figure... That was one of the players. So back in 1947 and through the 50s, guys who played back then, these were, this was an electric football figure. The figure and the base were all one piece and they were all metal. All right? Um, it's, really, it's really not much to really talk about here. It's just it's what it is. It's just a piece of, of pressed aluminum attached to a metal base here and the, and the uh the prongs on the base were were basically blades all right so we're going to close this one out we're going to go to the next next photo uh i want to grab let's see let's go to gotham real quick i'm going to open up this one yes Remember earlier I showed you quarterbacks from Gotham? All right, now what you're looking at on the far right, that's the uh, first the first quarterback from Gotham that was used. All right, you basically put your ball in, the, in that little hole right there and you would pull back on, the, um, on that sheet metal and flick the ball out of, out of that hole and it would go down the field and it would make contact. And this was the figure that came with that quarterback. So when you got the board, you got those figures, and uh, you got that type of quarterback. And on the far right is the uh, upgraded version of Coleco's quarterback. And you see the, uh, the picture of, of a quarterback here on the metal. And at the very top, this was the throwing hand of the quarterback. Okay, so you flex that, so you pull back on that white tab that's over here that I showed you earlier, right? You pull back on that, and then you would flex that, you would flex that metal, that sheet metal, and the uh, the ball would uh would come off and go down the field. All right, let's see if we can find another uh, Gotham pose here. Let's go get this one. All right, okay. See the figure here? This is Gotham's upgraded figure from the second figure from the left. See that, that the second figure from the left, well I should say the first figure from the left, that was it was basically a very thin figure. It was almost like a wafer almost. Um, so Gotham decided to make a 3D image figure, and that's the one you see circled. Alright? And again, these are the quarterbacks. The one on the left and the one on the right. All right. That's Gotham. Okay, so let's go to 
Let me pull up a couple more of these Gotham figures here. Here's some other Gotham poses right here. All right. Gotham was a uh, company during the 1950s, by the way. And they were in competition with Tudor. Then later, they eventually went out of business and Tudor kept going. That's another story. But these, some, uh, these are some other uh, Gotham figures. And as you can see, it's a, it's a, uh, a figure and mounted on the, and, and the figure is mounted on the base. All right? The green part there, that green, that, that misty green color there is a, is a, uh, is a, is a base. All right? That's Gotham. Uh, let's get a uh, Coleco pose here. Okay, now we're gonna look at Coleco. We have that. Okay, and what you're looking at here is the quarterback I showed you earlier in the uh, in the video. It's a close up of it. You see the the big hand up here. The ball was placed in the hand. And you pull that stick. I have another picture I'm going to show you as well. The back, the back side of it. And down here on the leg, see that little tab right there? That's, that's, that's extending from the, uh, the, the calf or the shin of the figure. That's where the kicking is done. All right? And the figure on the left was the type of figure that came with this quarterback. And you notice the size of the figure, right? It's, it's tremendous. It's huge. I found these figures on eBay. Again, I never played with these guys back when I, you know, back in my day. I came into the game in the early 80s. Well, late 70s, early 80s. And, well, that's neither, that's neither here nor there. But, yeah, this is, these figures, this quarterback and figure are from the company Gotham. All right? So we're going to close this out. And I'm sorry, that, that wasn't Gotham. Coleco. Coleco. I correct myself. Coleco. All right. Um, going to go to what we have here. Let me see. This is, I want to show you a size difference. And I want to show you the back side of the Coleco figure close up. Now, you see Coleco's quarterbacks, right? They're on the left and the right. And then the back of the figure like I showed you that stick before in the previous in the, in the early part of the video that stick is right in between the number of the uh, of the figure and you pull back on that lever and the arm will come back and you will let go and the ball will go down the field and again here's that uh that tab right there for kicking you pull back on that and you released it and the ball will fly and go down the foot go down the field and between the goalposts, if you were accurate. And, on, and the figure on the far right with the yellow pants, that's the front of the figure, all right? Now, you see the one, the quarterback in the middle. That quarterback in the middle is Tudor's uh, type of quarterback that was made in the late 70s all the way through into the 90s. And you see the size difference, okay? Here's the throwing hand. Here's the kicking leg. That's the triple threat quarterback. And at the very bottom is the base. This base is what gave the, the kicker slash quarterback the ability to run. So in the early days of the game, we actually had that figure on the board. All right. And when we ran a play, that was the guy that ran for us if we wanted to run. And I got stories about that figure and how it got caught up in the scrum and the stick right here would get caught up. It, 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 was, it was a mess back then. It was a mess back then before we got, before we uh, matured in the hobby and got really technical with this game and we ironed out those, those little, uh, those little snafus, if you will. All right. So this is, you, this is, this is the uh, two to quarterback in the middle. And compared to the quarterbacks from Coleco, all right. All right, let's go to. We got Gotham, we got Coleco. Now I'm going to show you the quarterbacks that we use today. <clears throat> all 
right. Now, this is what we're doing today. Pretty much all of us across the hobby are using these figures. All right. And the quarterback you see on the far left is from a company called footballfigure.net. Um, it basically was a prototype figure done by Reggie at footballfigure.net. He basically took the concept of the Coleco figure by putting that stick in the back of the figure and having it control the arm that you see offset from the figure. This is the throwing arm right here. You place the ball right there. Remember that slit that I showed you earlier? You put the slit on the throwing hand of the quarterback and you pull back on that arm. You pull back on that, that stick I showed you that, that I highlighted earlier, right? And the ball would flick down the field. Um, this quarterback primarily, it could be a triple deck quarterback, but today we use this quarterback solely for throwing the ball. We don't put this guy on the field and have him play. Although you can, but a lot of us don't, all right? Now the second figure you see, the one in the middle, all right, this is a game day quarterback. This quarterback from game day. And this is one of my favorites. I'll get to, I'll get to why in a moment. Um, you basically the same as the other quarterbacks, you put the ball on the throwing hand here and you hold this stick right here Now this quarterback is taking some when, when game day created this quarterback they took concepts from the original from the uh, Tudor quarterback with the hockey stick in the back they took that concept and applied it to their version of quarterback but instead of the flexation coming from the leg portion the flexation is right here. Let's clear this out real quick. I'm gonna get a jump. The flexation comes right here on that spring. You see? And one of the reasons why I like this quarterback a lot, I don't want to get that too big. One of the reasons why I like this quarterback a lot is because the throwing arm, all right, is in direct line with the head and torso of the figure. Unlike the quarterbacks you see on the left and the right, I'm gonna to get to the one on the right in a minute. The throwing arm is in line with the head and torso. So it helps you to aim better at your receiver, in my opinion. See the other quarterbacks, the throwing arm is offset from the torso and the head. So some would say, some would say, the Reginald Rutledge quarterback is more real than that of the game day quarterback for that reason, because in real life, a real man, your arm is not in line with the back of your head. It's on your shoulder and it's offset, okay? But for me, I like this game day quarterback a lot. All right, although I can use all of them, but that's another story. Now, the figure on the right is a quarterback from a company called Geno H. This this is a very rare quarterback figure now. Um, I don't think Geno makes these quarterbacks anymore. And by the way, this quarterback. There's a right-hand version of the quarterback as well as a left-hand version. I got both, but I just put one on there. And the concept is the same. You put the ball on that throwing arm, you see extended above the head of the quarter, extended above the head of the quarterback. Right here. Remember that slit that I showed you? You slide the ball on that hand, and you pull back on the lever, and you flip the ball down the field. Okay, same concept. And this quarterback is it can you can use it to run if you put it on the base. But today we don't even put our quarterbacks on the field to play. We only put the quarterback on the field simply to throw a pass. But that's another video where I, where I, where I can show you all 11 figures, how offense runs, and when you bring the passing quarterback in and when you take it out. All right, that's a different video. 
All right, so let's clear this out. Okay, so these are the quarterbacks that we throw with today. All right, so let's close that. <clears throat> so right, I want to look. I want to talk to you now about. Well, here's another one. Let me let me go over here real quick. All right, this is another Coleco figure. All right, this is the opposing team. First, you saw the red figure, right? This one is the that cream yellow off that cream white or beige type of figure. And by the way, these figures they used to have uh, uh, uniforms. You could like they were, they were made of paper. You could lay the lay the paper onto the body of the figure and give it a helmet and pants. But uh, Coleco, not Coleco, but Gotham. I'm sorry, this is Gotham. They got away from it. They, they stopped doing the uniforms. So they just gave you plain figures, right? I get Coleco and Gotham mixed up sometimes. By the way, you know, just as a side note, I was on Facebook and I was asking the guys, you know, uh, I showed the guys a couple of figures and I had forgotten whether it was a Gotham figure or a Coleco figure. So I had to reference the, uh, the information from the uh, book, The Unforgettable Buzz. It's basically an encyclopedia about the hobby of electric football, basically, right? Okay, so I'm gonna close this out. <clears throat> All right, so let's go to, let's look at some figures here. All right, now remember, we talked about Gotham, we talked about Coleco, Tudor, right? What you're looking at right now are figures from Tudor and Gotham, okay? The figure on the far left, is the original electric football figure from Tudor. And as you can see, this is one piece of metal. No form to it, no 3D, nothing. It's just one piece of metal. And all the figures on the board were like that, both defense and offense. Then if you look at the third figure, this yellow one right here, okay, Tudor evolved. They changed their, uh, they, they went from that metal figure to this figure right there which is still a one-dimensional figure, but it's got a little bit more density, all right? Still the same concept, except everything's plastic. Um, it's my speculation that Tudor decided to make the base in the figure plastic as opposed to metal, it's because I think these metal bases proved to be a safety hazard back in the day. And so they went to the plastic and the, uh, the prongs on the base is basically uh, plastic mylar strips, all right? As opposed to those metal blades that were on the metal figure back in the, back in the, the, uh, the, the, the late 40s. So when, they, so when Tudor decided to change to go to the plastic figures, I think they did that because this metal it's probably a hazard, all right? So this plastic is a lot safer. Then later going into the late 60s, on to the 70s, Tudor went to this type of figure. That's, that's, a, that's one of the figures from the Fab Five collection, all right? There were five distinct poses that were made to make up a team, all right? Um, I didn't put a picture of the Fab Five types of figures, but I just wanted to give you, I gave you that figure right there, by the way. That, that, that was a wide receiver, by the way, which I'll, I think I'll show that to you later in a different picture. All right, so let's clear this out. And now the other two figures, again, Gotham. The red figure is here, and this blue one is there. The red figure was Gotham's first figure, which was all plastic, okay? Um, then the second one, that light blue one, was the upgrade to that red one. They went to the three-dimensional type poses. All right, so, so remember, Gotham and Tudor, back during the 50s, they were going back and forth. And then Coleco, I forget what year Coleco started their uh, electric football collection, but I know it was sometime uh, during the uh, early 1960s, if I believe. I have to check my references, but... That's just a little background for you there, okay? But as you can see, the figures are different as the decades went on, all right? Let's uh, clear this out. 
All right. Let's go to. I want to show you the evolution of Tudor here. Now here are different figures from the from Tudor. And the reason why I'm focusing mostly on Tudor is because Tudor is the is the premier electric football company. Gotham is no longer in existence. Coleco is no longer in existence. It was Tudor that took this game from its beginning all the way up until now. All right. After World War II, this this company has been going ongoing since then. All right. So again, you see the figure on the far left, that blue that blue piece of metal. That was the first electric football figure back in the day. And then Tudor evolved. They made they um they modified that game. They went from the metal figure and they went to that second figure that you see. All right. So a similar, that second figure, the pose is similar to that first one. So on the team, you had two, you had two kind of poses. You had that one, talking about that second pose you see from the left, right? And then you had the other one. Let me let me go back real quick. Let's let's go back. And grab grab the uh, other picture that we saw earlier. See this figure right here? That figure was on the same team as. The uh, previous photo that I just showed you. Let's go right back to it. Right here. See the second figure from the left? That figure and the other figures you just saw were on the same team, so they had two poses. And out of those two poses, they made 11 figures, right? And they were on a team. So those figures, these figures right here, were they went from the 1950s all the way into the early 1960s where Tudor decided to make a change again and they came up with the third figure that you see from the left and this this figure by the way this figure right here was the prototype to the uh, Fab Five uh, figure all right um, that figure right there the one that circled that one uh, it was it was nicknamed the gorilla figure by uh, by Lee Payne at Tudor. Tudor Lee, Lee Payne was one of the uh, uh, manufacturers he was one of the engineers at Tudor back in those days the game by the way was invented by Norman Sass okay and Lee Payne came on board sometime during the uh, I believe it was late 50s, early 60s. And he conjured up the concept of the Fab Five figure. And that was one of the first figures, the one you see circled, one of the first figures that started the Fab Five collection. All right? So they went from that figure to the next one. The figure that has number 13 on them. And it's a little bit bigger. So as they were trying to develop the uh, the proper, I say in quotes, proper, the proper type of figure that would represent a football player, they made this guy. All right. He had 11 of those guys on a Model 500 board, which I showed you in the uh, board nostalgia video. And, uh, those figures were like huge. They were taking up the whole board. The figures couldn't even move, right? So that that went into something else. Tudor had to make a bigger board. That's another story. If you look at the board nostalgia video, you'll see some of the boards that that Tudor invented over the decades. But I digress for a moment. All right. So they made that big figure right there, and then that's how they and and through that figure they began to. They found the right mold, the right shape, if you will, for the Haiti Repro or Hong Kong Fab Five pose. Let's clear that ink. Now, if you look at the two figures on the far right, not too big. These figures were the completion or the right size, if you will, 
of the Haiti Repro or Hong Kong Fair Five Post. All right. So if you compare this guy to that guy or that guy, you'll see the similarities in the poses, all right? And it's since the 70s, or should I say, yeah, since the uh, early 70s, the Fair Five pose has gone from then all the way into our present time today, all right? Now, a lot of traditionalists, they play, they still play with the uh, Fair Five figures, all right? But a lot of us have moved on and we started customizing figures, which I'll talk about in a moment. Again, this video is about the evolution of this game, the figures and the quarterbacks, right? Okay, let's go and grab another picture here. I want to show you some other t figures from Tudor. Now, these, these are some of the figures of the Fab Five, right? This is the figure you see on the left, number 63. That was the linebacker pose. Number 24 was the defensive back pose. Number 86 was the was the blocker pose. So this is what Tudor had eventually come to from the early 60s going into the 70s. They finally came to they finally came to the uh, the right size or right mold, if you will, for an electric football player that represents a real football player. All right? So these figures you're looking at right here are the 1967 Big Man figures. Now, going back to that board nostalgia video where I talked about the uh, 620 board, the model 620 board, that board was made in 1967, and the figures that you got with them were these because these figures were a little bit bigger and the board had to be a little bit bigger to accommodate the size of the figures. That's another, that's another story, another video in itself. But these figures you see right here are the uh, 67 big man figures that represent the uh, Fab Five, members of the Fab Five. So if you go back to those running back poses I showed you in the previous picture, that pose was associated with this with these guys right here all right so we're gonna move on from here and we're gonna go to I want to show you some other pictures from old school tutor and this is the other pose that represents a fat five all right this was the wide receiver you know you could use them as running backs but you know out of the box Tudor called this pose a wide receiver. All right. Um, the figure on the left is a New England Patriot, which, by the way, they were the Boston Patriots back in the day. And the figure on the right is a New York Jet. All right. And of course, that the triple deck quarterback is in the middle there. It kicks, throws, and it runs. All right. That's the wide receiver pose. Okay. And by the way, these figures were Hong Kong figures. And the difference between Hong Kong figures and Haiti figures is was it was the density in plastic. The Haiti figures were thicker, right? And the, uh, the Hong Kong figures, their plastic was a little bit thinner. You could hold it up to a light and you could see right through it. All right, it was almost like a glass. It was almost like a glassy type of uh, type of uh, uh, plastic. But again, that's another another video. All right, let's move on. Okay, we got that. And I wanted to show you these ones as well. These are some other teams I was showing you. Okay. Now here's that uh that number 19 figure again that you saw earlier in the video, which both are by the way are wide receivers again. One was a, the 19 figure is a Los Angeles Charger. That's the uh that figure represents Lance Allward, legendary uh, AFL receiver back in the uh, the 60s. Um, and that goes. And that goes into that 1967 board I told you about, the uh, model 620 board. If you go back to the, if you go to the board nostalgia video, I explain the story behind that board. A lot of history there. 
Lance Allworth figure, Lance Allworth figure number 19 on the left. And on the right, you have a Houston Oilers figure. That was the original Houston Oilers figure, number 56. I got that figure from eBay, by the way. And that's how it came to me, and I never pulled the number off. I left it just like that. All right? <clears throat> These are the wide receiver figures of the, of the uh, Fab Five collection. Let's close that one. Okay, now I want to get to what we're doing now. Okay? Okay, this is what we do now. And you look at these guys compared to what I showed you earlier. These are two of my uh, complete sculpt jobs. All right, figure on the left, San Francisco 49er, and that figure represents George Kittle. All right, you see the, you see the decals, the, the number, the, the stripes, you know, the paint job. All that was done by me, okay? And of course, you see the game day quarterback in the middle. We use, we use that quarterback to throw to these types of receivers, right? And you look at the figure on the right, that's my uh, representation of DK Metcalf from the Seattle Seahawks, okay? So this is what we're doing now, right? Compared to what we used to do back in the day. See? See the difference? This game has evolved from 1947. What you see right here on the far left, 1947, right? All the way up to our present day. Now, 2021. Okay? So, what I'm going to do next is I got to change sets. I'm going to go, I'm going to pull up a play showing you how a pass is done during gameplay. But you know, I got some more pictures in here. Before I move on, I'm gonna, I want to show you these right here. Remember the custom figure, the uh, sculpt jobs I was showing you earlier in the video? I want to show you what I have here. These are some of the sculpts I've done. These were, these figures were, they were typical figures I got from manufacturer. Where in fact, these are, uh, let's see, these are Haiti Repro figures, by the way. And I modified them by sculpting on them, bringing out the shoulders, and I changed the helmet. So the figure on the far left and the figure, the figure on the far left is a game day figure that I modified. But the, and this figure on the far right, okay, these other figures are Haiti Repro, but this figure on the far left is a game day pose. So I sculpt on those and I bring out the shoulders and I change the helmet and I slightly alter the pose a little bit. And I do it mainly because when you apply decals, I don't want the decals to be crowded, all right? So customizing is a whole nother subject in itself, another video, but I'm just gonna touch on it a little bit here, all right? So this is one of, this one, one of the uh, sculpt jobs that I, that I had done. These are some of the figures you saw on the board in the previous part of the video. Uh, let's close this out. I'm gonna grab a few more. Let me see, I got a few more here. This is, uh, these guys are some of my linebackers. Um, these are all game day figures except the guy on the far right, which is a which was a Haiti Repro defensive back pose, by the way. So the next phase is to start painting the figure into the uniform I want, and then apply a decal, apply decals to it to make it a team member, like the uh, DK Metcalf figure you saw and the George Kittle figure. Well, eventually these guys are going to end up on a team. They might be Packers. They might be members of the Washington football team. Whatever team I want them to be, I can put them on there. All right? I can make them whatever team I want. All right? Uh, let's see. And these guys, these are defensive linemen. You know, these are five of my defensive linemen. So I'm not sure what team they're going to be on. 
all right but this is the this is this is what my sculpt work produces right here all right so let's minimize that one and let's go get this one. Oh, this is another defensive pose also defensive line pose okay all right so i pretty much showed you everybody here right okay so what we're going to do as i said earlier i'm going to change sets and uh, we're going to go to, I'm going to get a video depicting one of the passing plays. I'm going to show you how a pass play is done in an actual game. So give me a moment and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back everybody and I'm ready to now show you a passing play in an actual game. This, this uh, file right here, this video file here. I'm going to commentate on this one, but before I do that, I want to show you two other plays in, uh, in full speed so that you'll get the gist of what goes into a, an electric football play. Um, and then after those two plays are, are done playing for you, we're going to come back to this play and I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to give you my commentary on this particular play you're looking at here. All right? Here are the plays now. We're now back. You've seen the two plays that were run, right? And you got a, you got a clear idea on what goes into running a uh, an electric football offense in a passing play. Now I'm going to come back to the play that I talked about earlier that I wanted to commentate on. Uh, all of these plays that you saw in this video, right, were at the Capital City Clash back in April 2021. Okay, um, those last two plays were between uh, Dave Nichols and uh, Adrian Baxter. Now, this particular play here that I'm going to, that I'm going to uh, commentate on is between Darren Germani. He's coaching his uh, Clemson 
uh, Tigers offense, and he's matched up against uh, against uh, Charles Lane. He's coaching his uh, Tennessee Volunteers defense. Um, the quarterback is here, okay? Then when, when you see this play run, some of you are going to notice that the receiver here was given a clean release down the field. Now, anybody that knows anything about football, football 101, a defensive back should never allow a receiver to uh, go down the field uncontested. Well, Charles Lane did that by turning his defensive back, his corner, facing downfield, allowing the receiver to run straight down. See, I wanted to talk a little bit about this this particular play because of the the defensive strategy that Charles Lane was using here. And then a lot of you are saying, well, why would you want to do that? Because you know a cornerback should not should not allow a receiver to just go down the field uncontested, right? Well, the reason why uh, Charles Lane did that with his corner is because. He wanted to force Darren Germani to throw deep. Now I'm putting it out there, right? But Darren is a very conservative coach. He likes to throw short intermediate because in electric football, those type of throws are the easiest throws to make, right? Throwing deep is very difficult. And Charles Lane knew that. So he allowed uh, uh, Darren Germani's receiver to get wide open. Let's move the play forward. Okay, the board starts, and you see it right there. Here's the corner and the receiver. Okay. Let's clear this out. We're going to move it forward, and you see the receiver has a clean release. No other receiver is getting open. Okay, now, don't mind this guy back here. That's something that coaches do when they, they have players they're not using. They lay the figures down in the backfield, in the, in, in the end zone. Don't worry about that over there, all right? I guess he forgot to lay that figure down. But it's not, it's not part of the play. So now you have this receiver that's all the way downfield, wide open. <laughs> If Jamani wanted to, he could have stopped the board right there. Let's back it up a little bit. Okay. Bring it right there. If Jamani wanted to, he could have stopped the board. All right. And he could have threw the football then. All right. But he didn't. I guess he was feeling confident that day, that night. Or, or at least he didn't have any other receivers anyway. So he might as well just go for it, right? So let's move it all the way forward. And Jumani stops the board right there. Okay? Stops the board right there. So that's about, uh, well, he's at the 25, 35, 45. All right? That's 20, 30, uh, 40 yards. 40 yards deep. These throws, usually in electric football, it's an easy throw because it's a clear passing lane. No other figures in the way. But it also is kind of difficult because you don't know what angle to get because sometimes you, you throw the ball short. All right? So let's run, it, let's run this play some more. We're going to watch Jamani throw the football. Okay, he brings out his quarterback, as you saw in the other two, play, in the other two plays, right? He placed the quarterback on the table. Watch his fingers. Complete. Freeze it there. So wind it back. The ball hit the base of the figure. All right. And you see the ball, the blur of the ball is if you look at the 40 yard line next to the receiver, the blur of the ball is right there. All right. So 
Jamani was successful in completing that pass, although it was very low. So a completed pass, if it hits, to complete a pass, if the ball hits any part of the receiver, be it the base or the body of the receiver, the pass is complete. All right? So I wanted you to see this. We're going to bring it back some more. All right? And you see how he's holding the how he's holding the quarterback. Let's take it back some more. So I want you to see something else here. And remember how I told you earlier in the video, the throwing quarterback doesn't play on the table. All right. We have a, a figure that that they uh, that uh, we have a figure that holds the position of the quarterback on the table until you're ready to pass. And when you're ready to pass, you stop the board, right? And once you stop the board, you replace the on-field quarterback with the quarterback that you're going to use to throw the ball, as you see right here. You see Jamani's hands right there, right? And he's replacing the on-field quarterback with the quarterback that he's going to use to pass the ball so he moves the quarterback out of the way and he comes onto the field with the passing quarterback and he sets up to aim and he has 10 seconds to do this it's a countdown all right he aims his quarterback some rule sets say you can only use one hand other rule sets like the TOC allow you to eat allow you to use either one hand or two all right so this so Jamani chooses to use two hands. All right. Now you see where the football is, right? It's right there on the quarterback's hand, like I showed you early in the video. And like you saw with the other two plays, right? Okay, clear that out. Let's move it forward some more. Finger goes up and he pulls back on the quarterback. And he releases. Let's see if we can capture that. I'm gonna bring it back just a little bit. Okay. Okay. The ball disappears, but the blur. Okay, the ball is right. Let me move it forward. Okay, it's ricocheting. It ends up over here on the sidelines right there. So the ball bounced off the off the receiver's base, and the ball bounced out of bounds. Right, and the outcome of this play was we're going to wrap it up. Once the pass is complete, the defensive coach uh, makes his adjustments. He, he turns his defender, his all all of his unengaged defenders toward the ball carrier, and then the play is run for to finalize the play. And you'll see right here is the safety, and the tackle is made right there, okay? So that particular play was not a touchdown, obviously, but it was a huge game. And it's something, throwing deep is something that Coach Dermani doesn't really like to do. Saying, like I said earlier, uh, Charles Lane, the defensive coach, he forced coach Jamani to throw the ball deep downfield you see but the pass was complete and that's the objective of this video to show you how to, to show you how we pass in the hobby and what goes on uh, during the initial setup as well as we covered the evolution of the hobby regarding the figures and the uh, tools that were used that are used to pass the football so I hope that you've gotten this message. Hope that you enjoyed this video. And I'm going to be back with more. I'm Mo. Thanks for watching.